It's the top five Commander pre-cons. Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome back to Commander Countdown. This is the series where we poll the community on different Commander topics and give you guys those top fives as well as our honorable mentions. Today, our topic is the best pre-cons ever printed. So before we get into the top five that you guys picked, we're going to go over our honorable mentions. Veggie, which pre-con is your favorite that you think is the best? I went with the Legends Legacy deck that was uh, printed for Dominaria United, um, led by Dahada Binder of Wills. Uh, So this is a Planeswalker for four. Uh, That can be your commander. Plus two, up to one target legendary creature, gains vigilance, lifelink, and indestructible until your next turn. You can minus three to reveal the top four cards of your library, put any number of legendary cards from them into your hand and the rest into your graveyard, and you make a treasure for each one that you discarded. Uh, and then minus 11, gain control of all non-land permanents until end of turn, untap them, and they gain haste until end of turn. So you can attack everybody if you get to ultimate this, and... Some sack outlets might not be unreasonable. Some flings. I don't know. You can do a ton of things in these colors. This is a really powerful card. I played with this in the pre-con uh, battle that we did. But I've also seen Dahada just played in decks of this color because it's just powerful enough to be in anything, right? Like, very, very strong card. Yeah, even if the deck was like, you know, 99 lands in this card, the card is really good. Like, usually Planeswalkers just get blown up. Um, but this makes you an indestructible blocker to hold on. Uh, it just provides value if you're going to toss it onto the board in minus three. Um, and the, the ultimate is just win the game. Like 99 cards and a bad commander ain't one. Look here. Uh, <laughs> only one of us can be, can be writing magic parody songs. Okay. You can't, I can't both lose my job and get fired. <laughs> I did it. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So now that we've looked at the commander, let's take a look at the actual deck. Uh, Just some brief overview about the synergies. What is it that you like about this deck so much outside of the commander? Um, Honestly, it's a deck full of uh, future commander decks uh, because the the theme is legendary matters. You have a ton of different legendary creatures, all of which could be very good commanders in their own right. Yes, I see some some big hits here. We have a Tali. Uh, yeah, everything on honestly in here makes me want to build more commander decks. And the fact that you were saying that this is a bunch of other commanders, this might be a great deck for someone to pick up if they are uh, new to commander, because this gives you a ton of building options in the future once you decide you want to break apart this precon. That's really neat. Yeah, because I mean, like, what what better start do you have? Oh, I'm going to have a good deck to start and a million options as I learn the game. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the secondary uh, commander for this deck, uh, Shannon Sleeper's Scourge, very, very powerful as well. Uh, It just turns every legendary spell and land into more card draw. So you can, like, even just swapping those two out, uh, you get a very different game plan and and some very powerful stuff. All right. So uh, if you guys like this deck, again, it was in the Dominaria United pre-con set. So I do think that that is a wonderful pickup for a pretty high powered pre-con right out of the box, again, as as well as some some great options. My honorable mention, we actually didn't get any votes for this set at all. And I was a little surprised. And that is the new Lord of the Rings pre-con cycle. And I'm a big fan of the Food and Fellowship. This actually has two commanders that I can't read because they're too small on the screen. It has Frodo Adventurous Hobbit and Sam Loyal Attendant. Frodo is a 1-3 with Vigilance, and whenever it attacks, if you've gained three or more life this turn, the ring tempts you. Then if Frodo is your ring bearer and the ring has tempted you two or more times, you get to draw a card. So that by itself kind of functions as its own commander, no problem. Mm -hmm. But we also have Sam, who at the beginning of your combat create a food token and activated abilities of foods you control cost one less to activate. So this deck is all inclusive. I got to play it and I did a slightly sort of like upgraded version and I thought it was an absolute powerhouse. And for some very minor upgrades, this was able to compete at any table. Yeah, I mean, they they have such nice synergy, which, of course, they should, Frodo and Sam together. Um, But it's just this little, like, great, make a food, gain some life for for only one mana, get in, draw a card. 
And I was really surprised with how much synergy the food had. They came out with some really nice staple cards like Prized Pig. And the deck itself just had some overall surprising synergy with cards like Rosie or Prized Pig. Everything sort of added up to be a much more powerful synergy than I was expecting from a food deck because from Eldraine originally, food was kind of a letdown. I liked the mechanic, but the decks never felt super good. But this one I think is very different because the the food just cranks out power. Yeah, are you are you telling me that you really liked the uh the value engine <laughs> deck from the Lord of the Rings? <laughs> yeah, the, I I mean each each piece on this kind of adds on to it and there's no filler. It's all an additional piece to the to the engine. Yeah. And I did when I played it the second time, I added a couple of uh, upgrades. Some of them were super cheap. Uh, one of them's like Griffin Eerie. Every time you gain three life at the end of turn, make a 2-2 two -two flying Griffin. Couple of cents to buy this card. And I thought it was a super cool include. But then you can also go like Resplendent Angel and absolutely clean up. Fantastic pre-con uh, that is very easy to upgrade. It, I thought it was great. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like I have to mention at least um, they also... One of the one of the new cards for this deck was Bilbo uh, Birthday Celebrant, which is the way that I would take this deck. Uh, you're just trying to get up to uh, 111 life and then hit your win the game button of put all of your creatures into play. When you kind of stumbled over it, I thought you were going to say Bilbo booth birthday suit. <laughs> is, <laughs> that's what I thought you were saying at first. <laughs> well, he, he, the ring makes him invisible, okay? If he, that's how he wants to do it. <laughs> All right. So those are our honorable mentions. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you guys think of these pre-cons. But let's go over your choices for top five. And again, at the end of that, if you don't get your favorite deck mentioned, make sure you guys leave it down below in the comments and click the link to vote for our next topics to ensure that your choices are counted. So number five on the list is Heads I Win, Tails You Lose. This is one of the secret layer pre-cons for for. for Commander, uh, you want to tell us a little bit about the deck? Yeah, it is uh, coin flip themed, led by the partner pair of Okan, Eye of Chaos, and Zundersplit, Eye of Wisdom. Uh, Okan is a 3-3 three, three for 5 mana. Uh, at the beginning of a combat on your turn, flip a coin until you lose a flip. And then whenever a player wins a coin flip, double Okan's power and toughness until end of turn. Uh, Zundersplit is a 1-4 for 5 mana. At the beginning of combat on your turn, flip a coin until you lose a flip. And whenever a player wins a coin flip, you draw a card. This deck has veggie written all over it. I think you did play a coin flip deck in one of our commander games. Um, I don't remember what the theme of that one was, but I remember being very scared of it. Yeah, um... <laughs> I had built this deck or I with the I had built a deck with these commanders before and actually took it apart in favor of the one that I played on the show because the Okan and Zundersplit version was too good. Like I I was I was winning games too aggressively uh for for what I enjoyed. So I I switched it up a little bit, which maybe gives you an idea of how uh of how this deck goes. It's important to note too that this pre-con, the cards in it are listed at like 325 and you can pick this deck up for about 180. So it's an expensive pre-con as far as pre-cons go, but you're getting some powerful cards here that have some very good value. The main the main thing with this deck, you're going to make Ocon very, very big with lots of coin flips and then you just blast the table, whether that is swinging for lethal commander damage or they did include uh, the Chandra's Ignition uh, sorcery, which hits the entire table for a creature's power. So that's just you win. Yeah. And if you need some value, you've got cards like Niv Mizzet. Yes. If you need some value. <laughs> eh? Value. Um, and then it satisfies my my garbage coin flipping little heart by some some includes like Mog Assassin, which is not good, but fun where you flip a coin to see if you destroy your target or an opponent's target. Um, there's our. Uh, Car, our Carpolis and Minotaur, which flips more and more coins every turn. But if you lose those coin flips, then it, your opponents get to deal damage to your stuff. Also, uh, a full suite of like very playable cards for other decks. If you guys are new looking for them, you're going to get Ponder and a bunch of like the staples that you just kind of need. Uh, Blasphemous Act. So, yeah, I, I think this is a great option, though, maybe a pricier one if you are in the business of picking up pre-cons as a new player or just coming back to the game without having a ton of cards 
products in your collection. Good option, but again, a little pricey. Let's go ahead and move on to number four. Again, this is the community poll. So this is what you guys have chosen. And that is Breed Lethality. It's the Atraxa deck that was printed in the 2016 Commander Precon. I probably don't need to uh, tell you all what Atraxa does, but just for the reminder, uh, Atraxa is a four mana, four, four, every color but red, flying, vigilance, death touch, lifelink, and at the beginning of your end step, you proliferate. That is a lot of key terms for only four mana. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it would still be good if it didn't have the second part. If it was just, oh, four mana, four, four, flying, vigilance, death, touch, life length. And that is not the best part of the card. And proliferate is a nasty trigger if it if it's doing some crazy things. And you could ramp into this very easily with just a mana rock. And you're casting this, you know, you arcane signet on two, and then you're that is colors, right? What's yeah. the one that's not colors? What? I cast one. Mindstone? Mindstone's Mind. colorless. Yeah. Arcane Signet on two and cast this big dum dum on four, on three. That's a scary table. Great. Now here's 10 million ways that you can build this that are all super broken. And these colors all have access to really good things you might want to be proliferating. Plus one, plus one counters. I mean, you can go stun counters, poison counters. I mean, there's a, planeswalkers are going to be great in this deck. I had never actually looked at what what came in this precon um, because you know mo most people have their own build of Atraxa that are like all equally as as mean mean. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and so I figured that the deck, uh, the original precon, was just filled with like, okay, here's some like some stuff to proliferate. Uh, no. This also very broken. Yeah, it has some cute little cards that you're not going to see, like Tuscard uh, Champion. But then you have like other more crazy cards, uh, full suite of like board clears, treasure crews. I mean, it's got access to everything. I feel like the, this is just four color robbery. The, I did not expect this to be packed with so many good cards. What are, what are the give us two highlights here of the good cards? Champion Landholt, Lamholt, uh, Commander Staple, uh, right in this. Um, uh, Ishai, uh, Ajutai Dragon Speaker, one of the uh, one of the two color partner cards that shows up in a lot of decks that kill you really, really fast. Um, and then, uh, you know, some some counter all stars in Forgotten Ancient and Colonian Hydra. So there, there's two cards that you asked for. Forgotten Ancient's actually really cute because you can move counters onto things that don't have counters and then proliferate everything. Oh, mwah. That, that is fantastic. So definitely deserving of uh, a spot here on our top five pre-cons because it's just a mean commander. And all of these cards are playable in commander on like on their own other other actual commanders in addition to just cards you're going to want in most of your decks. Mm -hmm. And number three is actually a favorite of mine, and that is Vampiric Bloodlust. Commander is Edgar Markov, and this was printed in the 2017 Commander Pre-cons. Yeah, Edgar Markov is a six mana four four. Granted, you may not ever cast it because it has the eminence ability. Uh, whenever you cast another vampire spell, if Edgar Markov is in the command zone or on the battlefield, create a one one black vampire creature token. Also, his first strike and haste. And whenever it attacks, you put a plus one plus one counter on each vampire you control. This was actually one of the very first decks I ever played. I actually got to play on an episode of uh, The Worst Commander Show, and this deck was lent to me to borrow by one of the players. And I mean, I, I maybe played five games going into this, so I was still pretty new to Commander and fell in love with this deck. I wanted it to be one of the first decks that I built until I saw the price tag on this Commander. Uh, the Edgar himself is a $80 card. So I quickly never built that card, uh, never built that deck. But I do think that this is a fantastic one. Uh, I would love to know how much the precon is, actually, uh. if, if our judge, how much is a sealed version of this? Wait, guess, guess. What's your guess? Well, Edgar is $80. So my guess is going to be 110. Oh, 110. Yes. Good. Yeah. Uh, the deck, my guess is uh, 350. Wow. 295. Okay. That is. A little, a little too pricey for my blood. Ah, uh, that was an accident. This whole cycle of precons, uh, because they all had the the eminence ability, were <laughs> incredibly powerful. Um, just getting a a static ability that you pay no mana for, kind of good. 
Yeah, I love everything about vampire decks because it's very much in my wheelhouse. I love uh, Drain. I like Orzhov decks in general, and I'm a, a red player too. So yeah, this is this is the perfect precon for me. I, I wish I could could get a copy of this. It may, it may seem obvious there's a blood artist in this, but that card you don't see um, printed in as many of the decks anymore, especially the ones where you know you you think it would be. I love blood artist. The art is so good. It's my favorite. It's two. What? It's too rich for your blood, and the art on Blood Artist is... Veggie gives me too much credit for for jokes I don't intend. I think I'm... No, I think I think I may actually be out of a job soon. Um, <laughs> Teferi's Protection! Oh! <laughs> that, that, the price on that did just come down pretty, pretty heavily, because it did get a reprint in uh, Mo- a Modern Master... Or Modern Horizons, whichever something. One of them premiere sets uh so 30 dollar card just in this pre-con and is a staple in just about anything that will slam some white cards uh black market and blind obedience pretty pricey cards i know blind obedience just got a reprint still over six black markets printed in a ton still five just very well-rounded cards other staples sanguine bond underworld connections um i the deck is packed full of good cards on top of a one of the most powerful uh, commanders that's ever been printed. These are all staples that for our show, we need multiple copies of because they're just in so many decks. Yeah, because somebody likes to build a lot of Orzhov. That's me. Because <laughs> Orzhov's great. All right. So that wraps up number three. Let's make it to our top two. And coming in at number two is Planar Portal. With the commander Prosper Tomebound, and this was printed in the D and D Forgotten Realms cycle. Prosper four mana for one for Death Touch with the ability Mystic Arcanum. At the beginning of your end step, exile the top card of your library until the end of your next turn. You may play that card, and then the ability Pack Boon. When you play a card from exile, create a treasure token. So. We didn't cheat, I swear. We didn't put this on the list. You guys did. And our very last episode of Decked Out, this is actually played by Maldhound. So if you guys want to see this deck in action, you guys can go check out our last episode because this is on there. Um, Not pre-con form, but same commander. So overall, I love everything about the D&D series. I'm a big D&D nerd. So uh, the flavor on this to me is just 11 out of 10 on everything D&D. God, this card is good. It is very good because it triggers off so many other things, not just his own ability. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everything is fantastic. No notes. Yeah, card advantage and treasures. Usually just one of those things on uh, on a card is enough to make it pretty broken. Uh, this is also a new deck, so the pretty cheap. I think you guys will be able to pick up copies of this, no problem. Mm-hmm. And the value is more than there with the cards coming in at about $100 worth of cards inside the deck. But some great staples like Dire Fleet, Daredevil, Gaunty, all cards you're going to see in a ton of deck lists. Yeah. Grim Hireling is in this deck. Uh, I don't remember if this is the first printing of that card, but that card is nuts. Uh, lots and lots of treasures all the time and also removal stapled onto it. Um, Marionette Master in this deck. Here's a win con for like half of the decks in Commander. What makes this deck so good is the synergy across the board. Everything works together with Prosper. Yeah, it's really easy to get a ton of value. So even though you're not having a ton of big hitting cards like Teferi's Protection, you have what I feel like is a much more well-designed deck. So this is really good if it's a deck you want to keep together as opposed to one that you want to rip apart for building pieces. I think this this is one of our front runners. Yeah. And you know, you've all, you've all got that one friend with their freaking Prosper deck that you, you know you have to step it up uh, as soon as they pull it out. Yep, mauled hound. So make sure you guys check that episode out. Um, all in all, I think this is a very well-rounded deck that deserves its slot on uh, our top five. So that leaves us with just the number one slot. And honestly, I'm surprised there wasn't more from this cycle on the top five. The Warhammer cycle was insane. So Necron Dynasties definitely deserves a slot at number one. Yeah, this deck is led by Zarek, the Silent King, uh, a 3-4 for 4 mana with flying, um, with the ability My Will Be Done. 
Whenever Sarek, the Silent King, attacks, mill three cards. You may put an artifact creature card or vehicle card from among the cards milled this way into your hand. I have to say, I wasn't able to play in our 40k pre-con game that we posted. It was one of our very first episodes because I'm a huge Tyranid fan and I really, really wanted to play these. I love everything about these 40k decks and the Silent King is, is no exception. I think this deck is fantastic, very well built and chock full of value. Mm -hmm. I think it's very fascinating, though, because arguably... Uh, this is the worst commander, like just the card itself, of all of the uh, decks that we've discussed. Like, it's not a bad card, but um, a, lo a lot of the other decks, like th the commander card is the best card in the deck. Mm -hmm. And this one, it's not, I don't think. Yeah, but very, very powerful. Uh, spoiler alert, Was the, I think this was the winner of our game? Yes. Maybe. Yes. I'm not sure. Yes. But maybe not. So go watch it. <laughs> but overall, I think, yeah, this was this is the kind of deck that like will slowly value you out and get the game in the end. Right. I <laughs> see. That's interesting because I would argue that it's not that way. But you could play this either way because this has got some really, really strong individual combos or you can just go to value town uh, and and. And eke out the win that way. If I yeah, if I remember correctly, it was like pulling a bunch of things out of the graveyard and getting to draw when things died, and a bunch of stuff like that that just sort of overran the board uh, and led it to victory. Even though it looked kind of like the underdog in most of the episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this is a really really strong deck. I think all of the Warhammer 40k decks are worth picking up. Um, when we build decks for our recording weekends, oftentimes we have to build 16 to 20 something decks, and every deck will have a couple of the 40k cards in them so i ended up having to buy a whole new cycle and rip them apart so we had them we had their guts to build out of because the cards are so good i think this was a fantastic cycle the secondary commander um Tra Traz in the infinite uh also literally goes infinite with a lot of things um that com that card is a very powerful commander also before i wrap that up i just want to say go tyranids i had a tyranid army so if you guys if you guys are not on Team Tyranids, we can't be friends. I, uh, I, I I painted all my Tyranids pink and purple and put sparkles all over them because I liked beating up boys with purple, pink monsters. And it brought me so much joy. Little nerd girl was so happy. <laughs> <laughs> and those are the top five as voted on by you. Heads I Win, Tails You Lose, Breed Lethality, Vampiric Bloodlust, Planar Portal, and Necron Dynasties at number one. We'd like to give a special thank you to the sponsor of this episode. That's EDH Rec. Don't forget, it's a great resource for you guys to build decks from scratch, but it's an amazing resource. If you guys want to upgrade a pre-con, you can go ahead, pick any pre-con up, put the commander into EDH Rec, and it will give you a ton of suggestions, including prices, for you guys to pick and choose upgrades and make the deck fit your style. And if you guys would like to get involved with our next episode, make sure you guys click the link in the description to vote on our next topics. I'll also pin it in a comment uh, down below. So get your votes in so you guys can be counted. And if you'd like to become a part of the show, please check out our Patreon. That helps support us so we can do more live gameplay episodes as well as these really cool episodes. We really appreciate it and it unlocks a bunch of cool perks for you. And of course, you can always support us by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. But that's all for this episode. We will see you next time on Commander, Commander Countdown. Countdown.